In a world full of fascinating and unusual places, some stand out for their unique living conditions. This video explores 15 of the weirdest places where people have made their homes, defying nature and adapting to challenging environments. Number 1. Cooper Petty, Australia Located in the remote South Australian outback, Cooper Petty is a small mining town with a population of around 1,700 people. The town is famous for its opal production, as well as its peculiar underground dwellings known as dugouts. Due to the extreme heat that can reach temperatures up to 113 degrees Fahrenheit, 45 degrees Celsius, in the summer, residents have found it necessary to build their homes below ground level to stay cool. Dugouts are excavated directly into the sandstone hillsides and can be quite elaborate, with multiple rooms, modern amenities, and even underground hotels, churches, and shops. The town's name comes from the aboriginal term Kupapiti, which translates to white man's hole. This unique living arrangement allows residents to maintain a comfortable temperature in their homes, typically around 75 degrees Fahrenheit, 24 degrees Celsius, year-round, without the need for air conditioning. In addition to the dugouts, Cooper PD is home to an 18-hole golf course with a lunar-like landscape where golfers play at night to avoid the scorching daytime heat. The course is entirely devoid of grass and has become a popular tourist attraction. Cooper Petty's residents are a diverse mix of nationalities, as the opal mining industry has attracted people from around the world. The town has a rich history, dating back to its establishment in 1915 after opal was discovered in the area. Over time, the town's unique living conditions have made it a popular destination for tourists and filmmakers. Several movies have been filmed in Cooper Petty, including Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, Pitch Black, and Red Planet. While Cooper Petty might not be the most conventional place to call home, its residents have embraced the unusual living conditions and turned them into an opportunity to thrive in the harsh Australian outback. With its underground homes, rich history, and thriving opal mining industry, Cooper Petty is truly one of the weirdest places in the world where people live. Number 2. Katsky Pillar Georgia. In the western part of Georgia, there stands a limestone monolith known as the Katsky Pillar, which rises approximately 130 feet, 40 meters, above the surrounding landscape. At the top of this seemingly inaccessible pillar, a small church and the living quarters of a monk have been built, making it one of the most unusual places where someone lives. The Katsky Pillar has been a site of religious significance since the 9th century, when a small church was first constructed atop the monolith. However, it wasn't until the 1990s that a Georgian monk named Maxim Kavtaradze decided to make the pillar his home in an effort to live a life of solitude and prayer. To reach the top of the pillar, Maxim and visitors must climb a precarious metal ladder, which replaced an even more dangerous rope ladder that was originally used. Once at the top, the living quarters consist of a small cell for the monk, a chapel, a crypt, and a wine cellar. The space is so limited that there is no room for a bathroom or running water, forcing the monk to make the perilous climb down the ladder to access basic amenities. Maxim's dedication to his solitary and spiritual life on the Katsky Pillar has drawn attention from both the local community and international visitors. Despite the challenges, he has managed to create a small garden at the base of the pillar and has been instrumental in the restoration of the church and other structures on the pillar. Number 3. Setenil de las Bodegas, Spain Nestled within the Andalusian region of southern Spain is the unique town of Setenil de las Bodegas. Known for its peculiar architecture, the town features houses that have been built directly into the rocky cliffs. These dwellings are not only built against the cliffs, but some of them also have the natural rock formations, serving as their ceilings and walls. The town's history dates back to prehistoric times, with evidence of human habitation in the caves as early as the Stone Age. However, it wasn't until the 12th century that Setenil de las Bodegas truly began to take shape as a town. Over the centuries, the residents have carved homes, shops, and restaurants into the cliffs, creating a labyrinth of streets and alleys that wind their way through the town. The unique architecture of Setenil de las Bodegas provides its residents with natural insulation, keeping the houses cool during the hot Spanish summers and warm during the winter months. 
The town's name is derived from the Latin words septem nihil, which means seven times nothing, possibly referring to the numerous failed attempts to conquer the town during the Christian Reconquista due to its natural defenses. Today, Setenil de las Bodegas is a popular tourist destination, with visitors flocking to admire the town's one-of-a-kind architecture and sample its renowned local cuisine. The town is also known for its local products such as olive oil, almonds, and honey, which are sold in small shops carved into the cliffs. Living in Setenil de las Bodegas means embracing a unique way of life that is both rooted in history and adapted to the surrounding environment. Number 4. The Walled City of Shibam, Yemen Nestled in the heart of Yemen's Wadi Hadramaut, the walled city of Shibam stands as a striking example of ancient urban planning and architectural ingenuity. Often referred to as the Manhattan of the Desert, Shibam is renowned for its distinctive skyline of tall mud-brick tower houses, some of which rise to a height of 100 feet and date back to the 16th century. Surrounded by a fortified wall, the city was strategically designed to protect its inhabitants from potential invasions and floods. The narrow winding streets and the dense arrangement of the tower houses were constructed with the region's harsh climate in mind, providing shade and efficient air circulation to help regulate the temperature within the city. Shabam's tower houses, which can be up to 11 stories high, are made from sun-dried mud bricks, a sustainable and locally available building material. The exterior walls are coated with a layer of mud and straw, which serves as a protective barrier against wind and rain, and must be regularly maintained to prevent damage. The walled city of Shibam is not only an architectural marvel, but also a testament to the resilience and creativity of its inhabitants, who have adapted their way of life to the region's challenging environment. In 1982, UNESCO designated Shibam a World Heritage Site, in recognition of its outstanding universal value and the need to preserve its unique architectural heritage for future generations. Today, Shibam remains a living city, showcasing the enduring legacy of its ancient builders and the timeless appeal of its distinctive mud-brick skyscrapers. Number 5 Hanging Temple of Hengshan, China Perched precariously on the side of a cliff in the Hengshan Mountains of China's Shanxi Province, the Hanging Temple, also known as Xuan Kong Temple, is an extraordinary example of human ingenuity and perseverance. The temple was built more than 1,500 years ago during the Northern Wei Dynasty and has managed to withstand the test of time, despite its seemingly fragile location. The Hanging Temple is a complex of 40 rooms, connected by a series of narrow walkways and wooden beams that have been inserted directly into the cliffside. The temple is supported by a combination of these beams and the natural rock formations, which create a unique architectural structure that appears to defy gravity. The temple was built to be a place of worship for followers of Buddhism, Taoism, and Confucianism, showcasing a rare instance of harmony between the three major Chinese religions. Throughout the temple, you can find statues and artworks representing deities and figures from all three faiths, illustrating the shared spiritual values of the builders. The Hanging Temple's incredible construction and precarious location have made it a popular tourist attraction and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Visitors can access the temple via a steep and narrow staircase carved into the cliffside, which provides a thrilling experience for those brave enough to make the ascent. The Hanging Temple of Hengshan stands as a testament to the power of human faith and determination, defying the odds in one of the most unusual places people have chosen to live. Number 6. The Rock Houses of Guadix, Spain In the province of Granada in southern Spain lies the town of Guadix, home to an extraordinary community of cave dwellings. These rock houses, or cuevas, are carved directly into the soft tufa rock that is abundant in the region. While the concept of living in caves may seem primitive, many of these dwellings are fully equipped with modern amenities, offering a unique combination of ancient architecture and contemporary comforts. The history of the rock houses in Guadix dates back to the Roman and Visigothic periods, with evidence of cave dwellings in the area from as early as the 8th century. Over the centuries, the inhabitants of Guadix have continued to expand and develop these unique homes, resulting in a thriving community of approximately 2,000 cave dwellers today.
The rock houses provide natural insulation, maintaining a consistent temperature of around 65 degrees Fahrenheit, 18 degrees Celsius, throughout the year. This makes them energy efficient and eco-friendly, as the need for heating or air conditioning is minimal. Each cave dwelling is unique, with varying sizes, layouts, and decorative styles. Some even feature elaborate facades and outdoor terraces, offering a blend of traditional and modern architecture. Guadix's cave district, known as Barrio Santiago, has become a popular tourist attraction, with visitors eager to experience life in these unusual homes. Several cave hotels and guest houses are available for travelers looking to spend a night in this extraordinary environment. The town also hosts an annual festival, the Fiesta de las Cuevas, to celebrate the unique culture and history of the rock houses. Number 7. Meteora Monasteries, Greece Meteora, located in central Greece, is home to a collection of six stunning monasteries built atop towering sandstone rock formations. These remarkable structures date back to the 14th century when monks sought refuge from invading Ottoman forces and chose to build their sanctuaries in these seemingly inaccessible locations. The monasteries were built using a combination of pulley systems and human strength, with materials painstakingly hauled up the steep cliffs. In the early days, the only access to the monasteries was via long wooden ladders or nets that were used to pull people and supplies up the rock faces. Today, modern staircases and pathways have been carved into the rock, making access somewhat easier for visitors and the remaining monks. Living in the Meteora monasteries requires dedication and commitment to a simple spiritual life. The monks and nuns who reside there focus on prayer, contemplation, and maintaining the monasteries. Their living quarters are modest, with basic amenities and small gardens for growing vegetables and herbs. In 1988, the Meteora Monasteries were declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site in recognition of their cultural, historical, and architectural significance. Today, they remain a popular tourist destination, with visitors from around the world coming to marvel at the monastery's remarkable architecture and breathtaking views. The Meteora Monasteries serve as a powerful reminder of the lengths to which humans will go in pursuit of spiritual solace and the incredible feats of engineering and determination that are possible when faith and devotion are the driving forces. Number 8. The Cliff Village of Bandiagra, Mali The Bandiagra Escarpment, a vast sandstone cliff in Mali, West Africa, is home to the Dogon people, who have inhabited this region for centuries. Their cliffside dwellings, known as the Cliff Villages of Bandiagra, are a remarkable example of human adaptation to a challenging environment. The villages are built directly into the rock face, blending seamlessly with the natural surroundings and providing protection from both the elements and potential invaders. The Dogon people have developed a complex culture and society centered around their unique living conditions. Their homes, granaries, and communal buildings are constructed using mud and wood, with thatched roofs and intricate carved doors. The villages also feature sacred spaces, known as togunas, where elders gather to discuss important matters and resolve disputes. Access to the cliff villages is limited, with steep paths and ladders carved into the rock being the primary means of reaching the settlements. The Dogon people have managed to cultivate crops on the narrow terraces at the base of the cliffs, relying on an intimate knowledge of the local environment to grow millet, onions, and other vegetables. Their agricultural practices and religious beliefs are closely intertwined, with ceremonies and rituals held throughout the year to ensure a successful harvest. The cliff villages of Bandiagra are a UNESCO World Heritage Site, recognized for their cultural and architectural significance. However, the Dogon people's traditional way of life is under threat from the encroachment of modernity and the challenges of climate change. Efforts are being made to preserve the unique heritage of the Dogon and their remarkable cliffside homes. Number 9. Nagashima Island, Japan Aogashima is a remote volcanic island located in the Philippine Sea, approximately 220 miles, 354 kilometers, south of Tokyo. The island, with its rugged landscape and unique double volcanic structure, is one of the most isolated inhabited places in Japan. The small village on Aogashima, home to around 160 people, is a testament to human resilience and adaptability in the face of a challenging environment. 
The island's residents live in the crater of the larger volcano, surrounded by steep cliffs and dense vegetation. Their homes are scattered across the village, connected by narrow paths and steep staircases. Life on Ayogashima is simple, with residents relying on fishing, farming, and the limited resources available on the island. There is a small school, a post office, and a few shops, but the village remains largely disconnected from the outside world. Access to Aogashima is limited, with only a single helicopter flight and a cargo ship connecting the island to the mainland each week, weather permitting. The island's isolation has helped preserve its natural beauty and unique ecosystem, which includes several endemic species of plants and insects. Despite its isolation and challenging living conditions, Aogashima's residents have managed to create a close-knit, self-sufficient community that embraces the unique beauty of their volcanic island home. For those seeking solitude and an escape from the pressures of modern life, Aogashima offers a rare opportunity to experience life in one of the world's most unusual and remote inhabited locations. Number 10 Palafitos of Castro, Chile in the Chiloé archipelago off the coast of southern Chile lies the city of Castro, known for its colorful wooden houses built on stilts, called palafitos. These unique dwellings are situated along the shores of the Gamboa River and the Chanchi coastline, and were originally designed to accommodate the region's dramatic tidal fluctuations, allowing residents to access their homes by boat during high tide. Palafitos are typically built using locally sourced timber and are elevated on wooden stilts or pilings with each house connected to its neighbors via walkways or bridges. The houses are often brightly painted in a variety of colors, creating a vibrant and picturesque landscape along the waterfront. The interiors of the Palafitos are cozy and practical, with wood-burning stoves providing warmth during the region's cool, damp winters. The tradition of building palafitos dates back to the 19th century when the Kilauea archipelago was a hub of maritime activity, and the palafitos allowed fishermen to dock their boats directly beneath their homes. While modern transportation and infrastructure have diminished the practical need for these elevated dwellings, they remain an important part of Castro's cultural heritage and a draw for tourists visiting the area. Today, Many palafitos have been converted into boutique hotels, guest houses, and restaurants, offering visitors a unique opportunity to experience life in these iconic stilt houses. The palafitos of Castro serve as a symbol of the region's rich history and the resilience of its inhabitants, who have adapted to their coastal environment in innovative and visually striking ways. Number 11 Slab City, USA in the remote and arid Colorado desert of southeastern California lies Slab City, an off-the-grid community that has earned a reputation as the last free place in America. Originally the site of a World War II marine training base, the area now known as Slab City, is characterized by the concrete slabs that remain from the dismantled military buildings. Slab City has no formal government or infrastructure, and residents, often referred to as slabbers, live in a variety of makeshift homes, including RVs, trailers, tents, and other improvised structures. The community attracts a diverse group of people, including retirees, artists, drifters, and those seeking an alternative lifestyle away from the constraints of modern society. Living in Slab City requires a high degree of self-sufficiency, as there is no access to basic amenities such as running water, electricity, or sewage systems. Residents must rely on solar panels or generators for power, and water must be brought in from nearby towns. Despite these challenges, Slab City has developed a strong sense of community, with residents coming together to share resources and skills. While Slab City may not be for everyone, its residents have forged a unique and resilient community in the face of adversity, embodying the spirit of freedom and self-reliance that defines this unconventional settlement. The community serves as a reminder of the diverse ways in which people can choose to live and the lengths they will go to create a space that reflects their values and beliefs. Number 12. Monsal Seaforts, United Kingdom The Monsal Seaforts, located off the coast of southeastern England in the Thames and Mersey estuaries, are a series of imposing abandoned World War II era military structures. These forts were designed by British civil engineer Guy Monsell and were constructed between 1941 and 1942 as part of Britain's coastal defense system against German air and naval attacks. 
The forts consist of two distinct types, the army forts, which were built to defend against air raids, and the naval forts, designed to protect shipping lanes from enemy submarines and mines. Both types of forts feature a series of interconnected steel platforms supported by reinforced concrete legs, giving them a unique and otherworldly appearance. The Army forts were equipped with anti-aircraft guns, radar, and searchlights, while the naval forts housed submarine detecting equipment and mine countermeasures. The Monsell Sea forts played a crucial role in the defense of Britain during World War II, shooting down numerous enemy aircraft and contributing to the safety of the country's shipping lanes. Following the end of the war, the forts were decommissioned and abandoned by the military, left to the mercy of the elements and the ravages of time. Today, the Monsell Sea Forts remain a fascinating testament to human ingenuity and resourcefulness in the face of adversity. While the majority of the forts are inaccessible to the public and in various states of disrepair, they continue to captivate the imaginations of those who view them from afar, evoking images of a dystopian world or a relic of a bygone era. The forts stand as a reminder of the lengths people will go to protect their land and the innovative ways in which abandoned spaces can be repurposed and transformed for new and unexpected uses. Number 13 Turf Houses in Iceland Turf houses, or Torfbæir, have been a distinctive feature of the Icelandic landscape for over a thousand years, serving as the primary form of housing for the island's inhabitants until the early 20th century. These unique dwellings, constructed from a combination of turf, stone, and wood, were ingeniously designed to withstand the harsh Icelandic climate and provide a warm and sustainable living environment for their residents. The construction of turf houses involved the use of locally available materials and a clever architectural approach that capitalized on the insulating properties of turf. The walls of the houses were typically built using a combination of stones and turf, with the latter being cut into thick blocks and layered in a herringbone pattern. This method created a strong and well-insulated structure that could endure the island's strong winds and freezing temperatures. The roofs of the turf houses were made from wooden beams covered with layers of turf, providing additional insulation and protection from the elements. The interiors of turf houses were designed to be practical and functional, with a central living area known as a badstofa, which served as a communal space for cooking, eating, and sleeping. Smaller rooms used for storage or private quarters were often located off the main living area. The design of the turf houses was heavily influenced by the need to conserve heat, with small windows and a central hearth providing warmth and light during the long, dark winters. The enduring appeal of turf houses lies in their harmonious relationship with the landscape, their eco-friendly construction, and their embodiment of Icelandic resilience and resourcefulness. As interest in sustainable and traditional building methods continues to grow, the turf houses of Iceland stand as an inspiring example of a time-tested, environmentally friendly approach to housing that remains relevant in the modern age. Number 14. The Floating Islands of Euros, Peru The floating islands of Euros, located on Lake Titicaca in Peru, are a remarkable example of human ingenuity and adaptability. These man-made islands, inhabited by the indigenous Euros people, are constructed entirely from totora reeds, which grow abundantly along the shores of the lake. The Euros people have lived on these floating islands for centuries, relying on their unique environment and resourcefulness to maintain their traditional way of life. The construction of the floating islands of Euros begins with the creation of a sturdy base, which is achieved by layering thick bundles of totora reeds in a crisscross pattern. This base is then anchored to the lake bed using ropes and stones providing stability and preventing the islands from drifting away. Additional layers of reeds are added to the base over time, as the reeds closer to the water begin to decompose and require replacement. The end result is a buoyant and resilient surface that can support the weight of the island's inhabitants and their homes. The Euros people construct their homes, boats, and other structures using the same totora reeds that form the basis of their islands. The homes are typically small, single-room structures with thatched roofs, while the boats are expertly crafted with curved hulls and decorative animal-shaped prows. The Totora reed is not only a versatile building material, but also an important source of sustenance for the Euros people, 
who eat the tender white base of the reeds and use them to feed their livestock. As the world continues to grapple with issues of sustainability and the impacts of climate change, the floating islands of Euros provide a valuable example of a community that has learned to live in harmony with its environment, using renewable resources to create a self-sufficient and eco-friendly living space. Number 15. Tristan da Cunha, South Atlantic Ocean. Located in the remote South Atlantic Ocean, Tristan da Cunha is an isolated volcanic archipelago that holds the distinction of being the most remote inhabited island group in the world. The archipelago consists of the main island, Tristan da Cunha, and several smaller islands, including Nightingale, Inaccessible, and Gauf Islands. The main island is home to a small community of around 250 people who live in the island's only settlement, Edinburgh of the Seven Seas. Tristan da Cunha was first discovered in 1506 by the Portuguese explorer Tristão da Cunha. But it was not permanently settled until the 19th century when British colonists, along with American and Dutch settlers, established a small community on the island. Over the years, the island's population has grown, maintaining a close-knit and self-sufficient society that relies heavily on subsistence farming, fishing, and the limited resources available on the island. Tristan da Cunha serves as a powerful reminder of the human capacity for adaptation and endurance, demonstrating that even in the most isolated and inhospitable environments, people can carve out a sustainable existence and forge a strong sense of identity and community. The island's isolation has also helped to preserve its unique ecosystem and wildlife, making it a fascinating destination for researchers and adventurers seeking to explore one of the world's last untouched frontiers.